the record button here. Okay. Oh. Okay, good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us. My name is Matt Hogan. I'm with VHP, and we're part of the consultant team that's helping out with this project. Just wanted to let you know what we're doing tonight as far as how this meeting is going to work. We are running this as a hybrid meeting. So in addition to all these friendly faces we have here in the room, we're going to have folks joining us online as well to participate, learn more about the project, take part in the Q&A and the discussion. So we are going to be recording this session. Um, when we come up to the microphone to ask questions, if you're uncomfortable being on video, let us know and we can temporarily stop the camera. Um, if you do have a question, we also please ask that you do use the microphone, not only for the folks out there, but also for the folks in the room so we can hear you clearly. So raise your hand or if you want to come up and just form a line. Um, we'll make sure that we get the questions taken care of. Um, with that, my colleague Shay is going to open the virtual doors to folks online and you'll hear him, uh, you'll hear them give a similar rundown to how this is going to work. And then we're going to hear from Karen Sentoff from VHB. So thanks everybody. We're really looking forward to your participation tonight. And uh, here we go. All right, folks. And the virtual portion of the webinar is live. For those of you just joining us virtually, I'm going to give you folks just a minute or so to come in before we start. Okay. All right. So it looks like we've got a good number of people sort of uh, leveling off here. Um, so uh, hello, folks. It is nice to see you. We are running this as a uh, hybrid meeting uh, this evening. Um, so we've got folks uh, in the St. Johnsbury Welcome Center uh, and those of you joining us virtually as well. Um, once we get to the uh, question and answer portion of this evening, um, we have a microphone physically in the Welcome Center, um, and we will invite your questions and comments uh, virtually. Um, uh, when we get to that portion, um, we'll use the Q&A feature and the raise hand feature to take written uh, and uh, verbal questions and comments. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. Um, so both uh, the folks virtual and in person will be uh, on that recording for later viewing. Um, and with that, Karen, I will uh, let you start. All right, thanks, Shay. And uh, thanks everyone for your patience as we navigate this sort of world of in-person and virtual meetings, but we anticipate this is, this is the future of public meetings. So we really appreciate your participation and, and your patience as we, as we work through making sure everyone in the room and in the virtual space are, are able to participate this evening. So um, this evening we're talking about the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, very exciting. We've been developing the, Okay. Um, we are busy developing the management plan for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, and it's a very exciting time for, for this corridor um, through northern Vermont, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get into that in just a minute. But I wanted to go through a little bit of housekeeping before we really get started in earnest here. Um, so again, for the in-person uh, meeting participation, we're going to ask that if you do want to contribute thoughts, comments, questions, um, into the meeting and into the record for the meeting, um, make sure that you're speaking into an active microphone. Um, so we'll ask you to uh, join us at the microphone up here if you have questions, comments, thoughts to contribute, um, but just make sure that we are capturing that on a mic because otherwise folks uh, in the virtual space and for the recording um, really won't be able to hear your contributions. 
For the folks online, um, the, the virtual meeting participation, um, attendees are muted by default. Um, if you would like to speak, and, and Shay will remind you of this later, um, please click or tap the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen and wait to be called on. Um, once Shay indicates that um, it's, it's your turn to speak, uh, you will um, then be able to click or tap unmute uh, to go ahead and unmute. If you are on a phone, um, you can unmute by dialing star six. And if you'd like to write uh, in a question or a comment, um, the Q&A feature is available at the bottom of your screen. You can click on that button and contribute your thoughts um, through, through typing that way. And then polling. So we are going to have a little bit of polling in, in this interactive session this evening, um, hoping to capture the thoughts of both folks in the virtual space and folks in the room. Um, and so to join the polling, um, you are going to navigate to pollev.com. Sorry, my machine is giving me <laughs> warning messages. Um, you're going to go to pollev.com slash VHB polls. 501, and that is the way you'll be able to participate uh, online on a browser um, or on a phone browser. Uh, if you want to text to poll, to contribute to the polling, um, you can go ahead and text VHB polls 501 to 22333, and we will uh, prompt you again for that if you do want to participate in that way. Um, and we do have a practice question um, at the beginning of the session here, um, just to get folks going and, and learn a little bit about where folks are coming from. Um, so I will click ahead to that. And we're just asking folks, what town are you from? Um, and we've added here for, for the options, all of the towns, 18 towns uh, across the length of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail. Um, so if you want to go ahead and let us know what town you're from, um, folks in the virtual space, and if folks in the room want to participate, you can go ahead and text 22333, um, BHB polls 501, and then choose the letter that is associated with your town. Lots of folks from towns outside of where the corridor lands so far. We'll give folks just another minute or two to contribute responses. So we are seeing folks from St. Johnsbury, from Danville, from Hardwick, and many of the folks joining us this evening from places that fall just outside of where the corridor is across northern Vermont. All right, I think we'll wrap up the practice polling and we will have more opportunities to participate in the polling in just a little bit. I'm seeing some, some folks in the room. Uh, St. Johnsbury is option A for folks in the room who are looking at their screens and trying to figure out which one to click. All right, so I think we will get going in earnest here. Thank you for participating. And we will, again, prompt you uh, to participate in the polling later in the session. Thanks for that. All right, so the agenda for this evening, um, we'll go through a welcome and some introductions. Um, our, our colleague Chris Hunt is on the virtual meeting and will be giving us a construction update on, on where um, construction is headed through this season. And then um, do a, a little 
a little look back at some of the stakeholder outreach and, and input we've received so far in this process. Um, then we'll present the draft vision and goals that we've been developing for the management planning process um, and hopefully get some feedback from you all on, on those vision and goals, the sort of guiding principles for this management plan. Um, and then we'll get into the development of the management plan and where we are and, and hopefully get some input from you all on um, the elements that, that we want to round out in the management plan. Um, and then uh, follow up with some next steps and, and where we're headed. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Michelle Boomhauer to welcome everyone and give a couple of introductions. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Karen mentioned, I'm Michelle Boomhauer and I'm the division director for policy planning and intermodal development for the Agency of Transportation. And intermodal development includes our rail and aviation uh, group, as well as public transit. And then we have uh, policy planning, mapping, permitting, um, communications. Uh, so we have a, a very diverse group. I spend a lot of my time this time of year in the State House working with your legislators, but it's a thrill to be here in a historic train station in St. Johnsbury, where I did live for a year and my daughter went to high school here. And um, it's uh, very exciting to have driven here up from the Richmond area along Route 15 and seen so much construction activity happening on the trail all along the way. So um, big push, big year, a lot of activity happening with the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail. And it's, it's really exciting to see. I've been working on this project in different capacities for over 20 years. And um, it's amazing that we're at this point right now. So I really want to appreciate um, all of the support folks in the audience, for folks joining us virtually have brought to this effort. Um, we have received um, sort of a tremendous outpouring over the years in support of this effort. Um, beginning with uh, Senator Sanders and from a funding perspective um, back in the beginnings when we received a $5 million earmark, which he more recently followed up with a $2 million earmark that we just received word on a couple of weeks ago. And um, so we will be talking as we work later through the management plan uh, about how those funds will be deployed to help communities make connections to the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail as we move forward in this process. So um, I do want to acknowledge um, the Vermont Association of Snow Travelers, who has really been the underpinning uh, ground framing entity who have brought us to this point. And um, now we're adding a whole lot more resources and a lot of enthusiasm, and, and we are going to be sort of stepping into the next phases um, there's a couple of people here that I want to specifically call out today uh, from my staff, and that includes Amy Bell, who you met on your way in. Amy's in the back, and um, she's our senior planning coordinator who um, oversees our statewide planning program with regional planning commissions and doing plans for the agency as well. And Amy also has been at this effort for a very, very long time alongside me in, in her capacity with the agency. And then I'd like to recognize Bill Gray, if you want to just give a wave. Um, Bill is uh, and has been our on the ground uh, trail person uh, going around making sure that if there's a washout or if there's a need to do something, um, that folks are made aware of it, that the repairs happen, that we're communicating um, with our partners, not just on the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, but on the Delaware and Hudson Trail, which is down in the Rutland, uh, uh, Clarendon area. Oh, sorry, Clar Rutland. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Putney and Pulteney. Uh, and um, also the BB Spur, which is up in Derby, and the Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail, which this trail connects to um, up in uh, Franklin, Vermont. And so um, recognizing this wealth of uh, trails that are now within the purview of the agency to oversee and manage. Um, we recognize the need to do this management planning process. And we said, let's start with the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail given where it is at in this process. 
and then move and replicate this effort out to our other trail networks. And um, if we're gonna be going big, uh, we need somebody to manage the program. And so I'd like to invite Jackie Casino to come up and introduce herself. Um, Jackie uh, was with the Agency of Transportation for about seven years, uh, seven or eight, eight, yeah, um, in our planning group. So she's worked in my team for uh, many years and then more recently had a stint with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. And we've lured her back to uh, work as the statewide rail trail um, program manager. So Jackie, if you wanna just make a remark. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so as Michelle said, yep, I was with the Agency of Transportation for a little over eight years, short stint with ACCD. You can insert short attention span joke there, right? And then I really feel like I'm coming home to be able to come back to the agency, work with the rail group, people like Bill who've been doing this work for years. Um, and also just really excited. I lived in, Lam in Lam Lamoille County and worked there for many years. Um, and so it's just really exciting to see, you know, the final few segments come in. I lived in Woolkit and to like, think about that um, just really happening. Like we can, you know, could walk out my back door and it was there. And so I think it's a really exciting time for the state. It's a really exciting time for the agency and really exciting time for the towns and community members um, along the rail trail, as well as people that hopefully are coming from away to come check it out. Um, so like I said, I'm really excited to be here. Um, before my stint um, with the agency and planning, I was in the outdoor rec recreation field for many years. So again, I feel a little bit like I'm coming home with this um, job. So I'm very excited to be here and really as an observer um, this, this tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Jackie. All right. So, um, Michelle did go through a number of introductions. I think I wanted to just acknowledge um, the rest of the project team and the, the tech team that we have working for uh, the consultant side this evening and making the hybrid meeting possible, um, as well as we have um, Jackie Dement on the VTran side of the project in the virtual space and looking at Q&A and thoughts from the group in the virtual space. Um, David Saladino, who you will hear from a little bit later um, on the VHB uh, side of, of this effort. Um, and Elizabeth Sundberg with us here in, in person. You've already heard from Matt Hogan and Shay Halley who are helping us out uh, on the tech team this evening. Um, I also want to acknowledge our stakeholder group that we've assembled for, for this project, a committee to really help shepherd this process and, and um, uh, you know, be our reviewers and our, and our thought producers on, on so much of this effort. So um, worth acknowledging that we've assembled a diverse group of folks from the regional planning commissions and um, from VAST, from um, different different parts of the agency, um, really a lot of folks thinking about this effort actively and, and engaged in this process. And really quickly, a little bit about the management plan itself. Um, we're anticipating the completion of the trail later this year. And with that, um, VAST has been managing the, the trail corridor um, and, and had a management plan in place that was adopted back in 2016, the most recent version adopted back in 2016. Um, but with the completion of the trail and sort of um, the, the next chapter of this trail with construction complete later this year, um, VTrans is taking over that management role um, from VAST on July 1st. And so in anticipation of that, as, as Michelle had said, um, you know, we really, we're thinking through what the management plan needs to look like for the corridor. Um, and a couple of things that we're hoping to do with the management plan, it's really needed to describe that cohesive vision for the trail as a complete corridor, 93 miles of trail um, looks a little bit different than you know completed segments that um, may be used by, by a lot of folks end to end or, or segment use. Um, the other, the other things are um, to identify those long range strategies for the management, maintenance and operations of the trail. Um, so really thinking about what that looks like under the VTrans umbrella uh, into the future. Um, 
The third thing, supporting opportunities for uh, community economic development along the LVRT, really figuring out those trail connections, trail town connections, and how we draw users into our, into our towns um, and, and stay overnight and eat and drink and, and do all the things that are, that are available and, and utilize the services that are available along the trail corridor, really get to that economic development piece. Um, and as Michelle had mentioned, um, the idea too with this management planning process is really to set up the framework for management plans for um, the other uh, rail trails that are, that are part of the VTrans purview. And just um, quickly to show you where we are in this process, we're sort of smack in the middle of this process um, here at this second public meeting. Um, it's great to be in the Northeast for this meeting. Um, our, our last public meeting we're planning to hold um, in the Northwest. So we had one meeting in the central uh, portion of the trail um, here in the Northeast this evening. Excited to hear from folks uh, here in St. Johnsbury. And then we'll have our last meeting up in um, yet to be determined somewhere in Franklin County. Um, we have been um, really in this gap analysis and needs assessment stage of the, of the process um, currently and heard from lots of stakeholders, lots of public input. Um, and we'll, we'll jump into that in a little more detail here in a minute. All right, and with that, I will hand it over to Chris Hunt, who is gonna give us a quick construction update on where things are on the construction of the LVRT. All right, uh, thanks, Karen. Um, so uh, thanks everybody for joining us tonight virtually and in St. John's very there. Sorry, I couldn't join you in person. But um, as Michelle mentioned, uh, it's a busy time for construction. We're just getting going. It's gonna be a very busy year. Um, uh, next slide, please, Karen. So um, this map here, it comes from our uh, LVRT website. A lot of the information I'm gonna share is available there as well. Um, looking uh, west to east, you can see the 44.4 miles completed already in green. Those were completed um, you know, roughly since 2014 to 2021 by VAST in coordination with VTRANS in addition to a small section completed by the town of Hardwick in the middle there. Um, and the yellow segments that you're seeing uh, moving again west to east, you see Sheldon to Cambridge, we call that LVRT 11. Uh, next, Morristown to Hardwick, we call that LVRT 12. And finally, Hardwick to Danville, that's LVRT 13. And then interspersed throughout the map there, you'll see six circles. That's a separate priority bridge project that we wanted to get going first before any of the trail segments were bid. So that's LVRT 10. Uh, next slide. This is uh, gives you a schedule idea and sort of puts into perspective how much we have going right now. The green segments going back to 2014 represent that 44.4 miles completed in a seven year period. And we're now gonna complete 48.7, the remaining miles of the trail just this summer and some, you know, the priority bridge project that started last year. So, uh, you know, another graphic representation of how busy construction is to get to our goal of uh, completion this year. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, these might be pop-ups. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, LVRT 10, that's our priority bridge project that was awarded to JPC card. Contract value 3.4 million with a completion date of August 31st. Uh, next is 11, Sheldon to Cambridge. That's with Dirt Tech. Um, contract value 2.4 million, completion date November 12th. 12, Morrisville to Hardwick, that went to SD Ireland, contract amount 6.9 million. I'll mention um, this is one of our larger segments of trail and we also have some bridge work, including um, repairs to Fisher Covered Bridge in Wolcott. Uh, we had to do a lot of coordination with historic preservation and making sure we you know, honor that 
historic legacy of the trail and the covered bridge. It's one of very few covered bridge, covered rail bridges still existing. So um, a lot of work went into taking care of it. And then uh, last is 13. That went to GW Tatro, contract value 2.2 million, uh, completion date November 12th there as well. Um, and like I said, if you drive along 15 anytime recently, you can see all these are under active construction or very soon about to be. Um, everyone's been turning in their submittals, getting their bridges reviewed, getting all their shop drawings approved so the contractors can get to work. Uh, next slide. So following after completion of uh, trail construction, uh, we realized we needed a cohesive set of signs so that as you move across the whole corridor, you're not seeing different signs town to town, different rules. So uh, we have a sign project coming that's looking at other rail trails across the country, uh, you know, examining our, um, our sign guidelines and other things we're doing around the state for pedestrian and bike signs and coordinating with stakeholders to figure out what signage for the project will look like, how people will find the trail, how people will find uh, directions to towns, mile markers, county markers, things like that along the trail. Uh, next slide. Uh, what this is not um, is temporary traffic control. So, you know, construction vehicles coming in and out of 15 during the construction season. Um, signs pointing users to individual businesses, attractions, towns, well towns, yes, geographic locations, but not any specific businesses or anything like that, or any interpretive signage uh, pointing out, you know, items of historic or cultural significance along the trail. Um, just we'll get into this more, I'm sure, tonight, but the signs pointing users to individual businesses, services, things like that, that's being contemplate as part of this management plan. So it's not like I'm saying we're never doing that. And I'm not saying we're not gonna do any historic interpretive signage. It's just not part of our basic wayfinding trail, uh, trail project. Next slide. So timeline for that, we just received our, you know, preliminary submission of the plan for these signs. Uh, we're reviewing those, working with VHB on it, and we're looking to put this out to bid this winter. Construction will begin next season um, with all the signs rolling out, you know, shortly after and giving us a complete trip. That gets us to our 93 miles open at the end of the summer, or at the end of this year, sorry, not the end of the summer. And I think that's it for my construction update. Thanks, Chris. All right, so back to the management planning process. Um, we did go through and put together an existing conditions assessment. Um, this is just sort of the, the highlights from that, um, really looked at the historic context and worked to document um, that, that piece. Um, the corridor inventory, um, the overview of the LVRT management um, structure that exists today, uh, some existing document review looking at um, town plans and the regional planning um, to really make sure we're, we're aligning in the management plan process with um, what folks are doing and, and sort of the, the groundswell and foundation of work that's being done at the municipal level, um, at the regional level, uh, making sure we're aligning with that. Uh, looking at different funding sources for supporting some of the projects, maybe for trail town connections and that sort of thing. Um, and then a best practices review to really understand um, what are the best practices for trail management in other places across the country um, throughout Canada. Uh, what are the best practices for maintenance and operations of a trail corridor system like this um, in other places? And then I'm um, really getting to that economic development and community connections piece. Are there, are there other examples that we can be pointing to um, for um, some of the best practices around making those trail town connections, um, supporting the economic development and, and revitalization of some of the trail towns in other places and, and use that as part of our framework here.
and a little bit about uh, how we've been going about um, this process. Um, so uh, we've we've been engaging with a lot of folks um, to really understand what are the needs along along the trail corridor. Um, we had our first public meeting back in January. Um, we've had a number of stakeholder group interviews assembling folks um, both at sort of the regional scale to understand and maybe drill down into um, what's happening in the communities in their region and, and getting at those trail connections. Um, what, you know, for some segments of the trail that are complete, um, lots of active users and, and already towns thinking about what those trail connections need to look like in other, in other segments um, where there hasn't been an active trail um, thinking ahead about what those trail connections need to look like now that um, there's gonna be a complete trail corridor and, and um, users looking for services trail side and, and wanting to get into towns and have a bite to eat or, or stay the night. Um, so really digging down with the different regions, um, also connecting with um, uh, recreation, uh, outdoor advocacy groups, transportation advocacy, ag advocacy groups to really understand from their perspective what the needs are for the for the trail system. Um, we've met with the stakeholder committee who's, who's been helping us to, to shepherd this process through. Um, and then ongoing, we have an active website. Um, we have a web map tool, which I'll point to in a, in a few slides here, um, where we're trying to crowdsource as much information from the public as possible. And we will provide that URL for folks to uh, be able to navigate to that and, and let us know um, what your thoughts about are about the trail um, and drill down on sort of a finer, finer geographic scale to understand what the issues and opportunities are along the trail. So just a quick flavor of what that has looked like. Um, these stakeholder sessions, we did this uh, virtual whiteboarding session with the stakeholder groups, um, sort of a, a facilitated discussion using a mural um, online tool uh, so that we could um, really document what the conversation was and, and much like if we were in person and, and whiteboarding and, and having a brainstorm session, doing that with folks in the virtual space. Um, and again, at, at the regional level um, with outdoor recreation and transportation organizations and businesses, we've been trying to connect with as many folks along the trail corridor as possible. And that crowdsource input tool, this is what it looks like in, in uh, the, the virtual space. It's um, really you know, an opportunity to drill down on a geographic scale and be able to add a point to the map and, and tell us what your thoughts are. Oh, there really needs to be a bike repair station here or um, you know, a water fountain or water access would be great. Um, upvoting things that folks like or, or agree with is also an option. So we start to build some consensus around where are those important connections? What are the services and amenities that are really needed along the trail? And with all of that information um, that we gathered in the first public meeting and, and in the time between that first public meeting and the crowdsource input tool being live through those stakeholder sessions, um, we worked to draft um, a, a set of um, goals and a, and a vision statement for the corridor and how it will be managed into the future. Um, and we're hoping to get a little bit of input on, on our version of that from folks um, in the room and in the virtual space this evening, if, if folks have thoughts, ideas, contributions um, on that. So just really quickly uh, at, a, at a high level, um, the relationship of vision goals and objectives and what this really means for something like a management planning process. Um, a vision is a concise statement that paints the picture of the desired future for the trail system. Um, goals, are, goals support the vision and lay out the desired long range outcomes to be achieved. And objectives are defined um, outcomes that support their respective goals. So you can sort of see the hierarchy building on the screen here with the vision statement um, for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail that we have now defined based on all that input that we received. Um, we had a visioning exercise at our first public meeting to really understand what are those, those key things that you think of when you think of uh, a 93 mile trail system across Northern Vermont and, and try to capture that in that cohesive vision statement. Um, and then started to define some, some goals that fall under that umbrella to really help guide um, the prioritization of, of some of the needs and, and the opportunities that we're hearing about from, 
from the communities um, to really understand uh, what, what do we really need to have rise to the top and, and find a way to um, support, whether that's a specific trailhead or trail site amenities or, or whatever that might look like. So the draft vision statement um, that we've developed for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail is the vision for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail is a year round multi-use recreation and alternative transportation corridor that is well-maintained and supports ec economic vitality, fosters community connections and promotes healthy lifestyles across scenic Northern Vermont. And really this, this stemmed from that visioning exercise at the first public meeting um, and really trying to capture um, what, what the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, all 93 miles across Northern Vermont um, really embodies. And so I will pause here and just see if folks in the virtual space, if folks in person have a reaction um, and or have any thoughts about what might be missing? Did we miss the mark? Um, you know, want to want to get a sense from folks both here in the room and in the virtual space. Um, does this seem like we're on the right track? Excellent. We're seeing some thumbs up from the room. How about in the virtual space, Shay? Any, any hands raised? Any comments in the Q&A on this? Um, we've got uh, one person saying, looks great. Um, and uh, somebody else has asked uh, about seeing who else is participating uh, in the webinar. Um, and then we've got a uh, good number of people in the physical space, and we've got uh, about 30 people attending virtually. Um, yeah, we've got uh, another person saying really great vision statement, um, and another person saying, I like that alternative transportation corridor is in there. Excellent, thanks. And I think we've got about 18 folks in the room here. I did a very quick head count while you were saying that out loud. So I'm probably off by a person or two, but. All right, and with the draft goals, um, we really wanted to lay out goals that would help to, again, guide the priorities for this management planning process. Um, and, and Dave will get in, into that in a little more depth uh, in a few slides here. But the goals, the overarching goals for the management plan to support the economic vitality of Northern Vermont communities, to cultivate community and culture along the trail and in trailside communities, promote healthy and connected communities, preserve the trail, the corridor and maintain trail condition, and to establish a well-managed trail system. That's really giving us those core goals that help to guide the management plan and, and the management of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail into the future. Um, and so I will again pause here and just see if if there's anything missing from these. If folks generally think we've we've hit the mark here, I uh, will pause and see for folks in the room and for folks in the virtual space if you have any comments on on the overarching goals for the management plan. And for those of you attending virtually, um, please uh, also use the Q and A feature. Um, to write in rather than the chat, just because that is easier for us to um, see who has said what and in what order as well. Seeing no folks in the room coming up to the microphone. Any action from the virtual side, Shay? We do have, uh, Helen Beatty says, uh, I would encourage highlighting Vermont's history along the way. Mm, yes, and I, and I do think we are trying to get to that with the cultivate community and culture alongside, along the trail and in trailside communities. Um, what I'm not doing a deep dive on here, but you'll see there is a, a strategy that falls under that goal 
um, or an objective that falls under that goal to promote rural heritage, history, and educational programming. Um, so trying to get at that sort of historical nod to, to the history of the trail here and, and its previous uses. So thank you for that. Ingrid says, uh, thanks. It uh, hits on important aspects uh, like economic, recreational, and lifestyle. Um, and we've got a few other comments of people just saying, yes, it looks good. All right. And we are um, open to feedback on these. Um, if you go to the website, there is an open um, comment and question box. So that is a great place to get in touch with us. Um, our email is also available there. So please do if you have thoughts as you walk away from the meeting this evening and, and have something you want to share with us, um, please do go to the website. We'll give you that link at the end um, and, and share that with us. All right, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dave Saladino, who is in the virtual space, who is going to uh, take us through the development of the management plan and um, some of the more interactive portion of the session this evening. Take it away, right. Dave. Great. Thank you, Karen. And uh, welcome everyone uh, in St. Johnsbury and everyone online. And um, I'm going to go through... Um, Kind of the uh, kind of where Karen kind of built us up to the development of this management plan. I'm going to walk through kind of how we're um, envisioning the the, um, the kind of the structure and and um, how we're going to build out this management plan. So um, next slide, please, Karen. So this graphic um, attempts to uh, kind of visually uh, uh, show the the steps that that we're kind of following through to develop the management plan. Um, so kind of starting at the top with the stakeholder input, as um, as Karen has has uh, described, we've got lots of uh, kind of tentacles out there to try to get as much input as we can. Um, we're just about at the end of that that period, that we're kind of thinking of it as a funnel. So we're trying to get as much information as we can um, right now, uh, kind of up until this meeting. Um, we've then taken all of the, the comments that we've received um, and um, we've been summarizing them by kind of bins or categories. And you can see um, some of them listed there in the green box. Uh, the numbers in the parentheses are the number of comments we've received kind of uh, along those lines within that category. So we've received well over 100 comments so far and um, uh, kind of uh, additional comments daily and we, we continue to kind of categorize those. So that's kind of the first step is to kind of figure out kind of what, um, what category the, the comments align, align with. Uh, next up is to kind of screen those through the vision and goals that uh, that Karen just just walked through to make sure that um, some of the input and the desired um, uh, um, um, improvements that that are mentioned by um, through the stake from from public or stakeholder input uh, aligns with the vision and goals. Um, so let's say somebody had said let's um, you know let's uh, let's pave the path with you know glass shards for example that would clearly not align with the vision and goals and that would be you know ejected from this process. Um, so far, all of the comments are generally falling in, you know, um, kind of aligning with the vision and goals. So once it's kind of passed through that screen, um, kind of the next step is then to um, move it into one of the three uh, buckets that we've identified here. So either kind of management bucket, uh, maintenance and operation, or economic development and community connections. And that's really the major structure of the management plan will be those three um, kind of sections or chapters. So talking about how the, how the trail gets managed going forward once it gets transitioned over to VTrans. Um, how the trail gets, how, how VTrans oversees the maintenance and operations of the trails, and then how, how we go about doing, um, you know, how the trail fosters economic development and those connections to communities. So um, we'll take a pass on the, on the next couple of slides, walking through each of those um, buckets a little bit more, and um, we'll pause as we go through it for, um, uh, for some of your feedback. So the first, uh, the first bucket is kind of around the management. So management of the trail system as it moves over to uh, VTrans and um, Jackie Casino, who, who uh, spoke earlier, um, will be uh, largely charged with managing the system along with all of the other um, you know, uh, uh, staff uh, at, uh, at VTrans and um, other partner agencies. And so within the kind of management chapter of this management plan, we'll be talking about um, roles and responsibilities, um, uh, both within VTrans and at those partner agencies. Um, outlining some of the policies and procedures, so you know how to plan and budget for improvements along the corridor. Uh, talking about use agreements, how how can somebody get approval uh, authorization to um, do something within the right of way, within the LVRT right of way, 
Um, special uses and permits, for example, having a 5K race or an end-to-end -end race, um, what is the process that, that one goes through to get a permit for those, those pieces? So we'll be spelling out all of those in detail. Um, and then, and then uh, talking through coordination. So coordination with people on the trail itself and then coordination with those kind of sister agencies, municipalities, uh, volunteer organizations, regional planning commissions, and so forth. So that's kind of the management chapter of, of the report. Um, the second chapter is um, kind of focused on the day-to-day -day maintenance and operations. Um, so that's going to cover things such as um, uh, condition assessments. So making sure we've got quite, uh, making sure that we've, we're staying on top of conditions uh, of um, various facilities along the corridor. So those are bridges, culverts, the, the trail surface, uh, signs, and so forth. And so conducting routine uh, assessments of those of those features to make sure they're staying on top of kind of that routine maintenance. Um, then uh, kind of the second piece there is around maintenance plans, so routine or ongoing seasonal maintenance, so including mowing and tree clearing, the surface management, uh, grooming in the winter. Uh, so talking through kind of um, how those services get procured by VTrans, um, the frequency that those, those events occur, those will be spelled out as well in, in this section, uh, along with some, some special projects. So along, um, you know, improving certain things. So if a, if a culvert fails, let's say, for example, you know, how, what is the process to go for uh, replacing that? Or as, as the picture shows here, if we want to redeck a bridge or make some improvements on a bridge, what does that, that process look like? Uh, and then finally, um, kind of a focus on trail access and trailheads and, and then the amenities along the trail side. And um, when I want to just um, kind of focus on this last one for a second and um, get some get some input specifically on kind of trail access points. And so uh, if we go into the next slide here, um, one of our thoughts here as we as we start to um, uh, as, as the trail builds out, we, we get a full end to end trail corridor. Um, one of the things we really want to make sure is that there's some consistency along the trail um, in, in, in all manners of things. And so things like signage and other things that, that uh, users are seeing along the trail, there is some kind of consistency to those, those things. And so starting with the kind of trail access and the trailheads, one of the things we want to want to make sure, you know, both the consistency and also as these new segments of the trail come online, we'll be having some new trailheads that will be, you know, servicing um, the users of the trail. So um, wanted to get your thoughts on kind of what are those amenities or, or features that, that are found at those trailheads um, uh, at, at kind of a basic trailhead access point. Um, and so uh, along those lines, so the next slide here, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to the Pole EV um, uh, 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 interface here. And so just a reminder for those um, who are online or for those who are, who are going to the URL, it's uh, poleev.com and then slash VHB polls 501. And then those who are uh, choosing to text, uh, it's VHB polls 501, and then you text that to 22333. So those are the steps to a uh, poll. And uh, the question that we're asking here is um, which uh, uh, amenities? So thinking about a um, kind of a uh, kind of a typical trailhead access point, um, which of these features? So we've got ten of them that are listed here. Um, we're trying to get to some kind of um, sense of prioritization or what, what, what you feel are most important to you. So we've limited to three. Um, I think uh, probably many folks would agree most of these things would be great to have at a trailhead. Um, but if you can try to narrow those down or you know, select your top three, kind of the three most important, um, that'd be really helpful. So um, we'll, uh, we'll see how the responses shape up here. It looks like um, we've already got 22 results, but I will give folks a minute to uh, respond before we influence your decisions based on consensus on the screen. And so that folks uh, in both places uh, can hear these aloud as well. Um, in that time, I'll read. Um, benches is option A. Water fountain, B uh, for C. Information kiosk, option D is trail map, option E, restrooms. Option F, bike racks. G, shade pavilions. Uh, H, picnic benches. I, trash and recycling receptacles. J, bike repair and pump station. And K is pet waste station. All right, results are ticking up quickly. Give folks just one more minute to add a thought. It's worth mentioning if you 
don't feel comfortable using the Polo EV interface uh, and want to contribute a thought in a, in a different way uh, in the online space, you can add those thoughts to the Q&A in the room here. Welcome to come up to the mic and contribute your thoughts, your top three. All right. I'm seeing things slowing down on the results here. So I'll click over to responses and see where we're landing. Wow. Very interesting. Nice, nice spread across across the the uh, the amenities. Um, clearly, restrooms uh, won the day here. So people would uh, very much like to see restrooms. See trail map here is um, looks like it's coming in second, and uh, water fountain as third. Um, very interesting. And um, you see uh, the kind of trash receptacles and benches coming in fourth there, and shade pavilion um, down below, and and bike racks bringing up the rear with one percent. Um, this is great. This is, this is very helpful. Um, and, uh, please do, if you've got additional thoughts, I see somebody has chimed into the Q and a, but, um, at, at, uh, any point do feel free to, uh, to add your additional comments. You see, um, Lois Parmalee, uh, mentioned restrooms and bike repairs her top two as well. Uh, so consistent with the other, the other, other votes here. So this is great. Um, thank you all. And, uh, we'll, we'll move on. Um, to the next question, which gets to a um, uh, question around um, beyond just basic amenities. And um, so, um, so at uh, more significant access points or trail junctions, so if we imagine, let's say the LVRT and Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail Junction in Sheldon, or you know, some of the kind of the, the busier, more yeah. frequented um, access points, are there additional amenities or things that you did not see on the list previously that um, you think would be important in those locations where we really want to make sure that there's a, a very uh, prominent display of, um, of you know amenities and uses um, anticipating high visitation at those locations? Uh, so this one is going to be uh, an open-ended uh, uh, input, and so. Um, uh, this is really asking beyond the amenities that were listed on the on the previous slide. Um, so uh, feel free to add in, um, you know, these thoughts. These are uh, you would just be typing in uh, the amenities that you would like to see. So at those more significant access points, um, what are those features you'd like to see? And so um, similar steps here. So the poll EV. Uh, um, uh, uh, polev.com slash VHB polls 501 is, is the web. And then uh, 22333 is the uh, text number to uh, to submit. And for uh, some of the folks here in the room, we might be able to do this, say, be a trip up to the microphone or typing. If you have something you'd like to see, raise your hand and just shout it out. And I'll just repeat it into the microphone for the folks online. Anybody? Don't be shy. Any additional amenities you'd like to see on the trail? Public art. We have a second for public art. I see we have some folks typing too, which is great. Looks like from the poll EV space, parking, list of community amenities with distances, lodging, restaurant, ice cream options. Pavilions, picnic tables, portalettes, uh, Wi Fi access, EV charging stations, food and beverage options, picnic areas, local food and drink vendors, bike repair stations with pumps, information kiosks, local businesses and cultural resources, a playground structure, picnic areas, a pump track. Another another vote for public art. Resting stop spots, more for picnic tables, a shaded area, EV charger, bike station. A little cut off on my screen here. Excuse me. Bike repair stations, public art and kid play areas, bike rentals, history museums, and any of the old train stations. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. Um, on the uh, the online Q and A, we do have um, Lois Parmley mentioned uh, restrooms and bike repair. We do have a, a question from Helen uh, Beatty who said, uh, can, "Can a community build its own shade pavilion, providing water, tools, etc., or will VTrans be building or managing the building of these resources?" Um, it's a good question, Helen. That is that is one of the things that we'll be um, kind of fleshing out um, as part of these recommendations. Um, most likely within the railroad right of way, um, uh, it would likely fall to VTrans to do any of those, you know, any amenities um, or construction or, or um, you know, uh, uh, improvements to existing, um, you know, train stations or depot buildings within the right of way. Um, things that are outside of the right of way, certainly communities can um, contribute to those facilities. Um, but we will be fleshing this out more as we as we dive into the kind of the um, maintenance and operation piece of the of the plan. Okay, good, good. So that was very helpful, and thank you again for that uh, for your input. Um, so then, moving on to the the third uh, kind of section of the management plan, and this this one really focuses on the economic economic development and making those kind of connections out to the communities along the trail. Uh, so this this covers those community con connections, ways to get people off of the trail, um, thinking about information sharing and trip planning. So um, a, a new and improved LVRT website that's really focused on kind of um, uh, the, the broader audience that will be attracted by this, this uh, larger facility, uh, potential for mobile apps, uh, and then thinking about events and programming and how that um, gets scheduled and, and uh, programmed along the corridor itself. Uh, so those will all be addressed within the, uh, that chapter of the management plan. Um, so we're going to dive into uh, a little bit of the community connections here with this piece and um, talk about uh, kind of how we're viewing some of these connections uh, along the trail. Um, uh, it's interesting to note, so along the 93 miles, we've got um, 20 village centers or downtown districts, um, either kind of immediately, either the trail passes right through the village center uh, or is, is uh, adjacent or proximate to the trail. And so that's quite a few uh, opportunities to create those connections out to those communities. So, so 20 of those 20 of those opportunities. Um, we've kind of categorized them using these three, three um, uh, categories here. So if the trail passes through the, uh, the village or downtown center, if it's kind of immediately adjacent to that downtown or the, the, the um, uh, village center, or it's proximate, so it's a little bit of a distance, um, you know, within two miles of that downtown center. You can see in green, you know, some examples of those communities uh, that apply to each of those three categories. And so we'll be thinking about different um, treatments and different recommendations depending on kind of the proximity or how how far the trail is from that kind of locus of activity within in each of those communities. Uh, next slide. So we're going to go back to uh, to Poly V. Hopefully, um, everyone still has the text number and uh, the URL uh, um, uh, on your on your browser. Um, so as we think about those community connections, uh, whether those are existing um, uh, sex sexes or trail that are open today or ones that that will be open and open, um, when I think about kind of those barriers that exist, so um, when you think about the communities that you're familiar with, you know, what are those things that um, that uh, trail users uh, either currently run into or may run into in the future with the new segments open um, that uh, may keep them on the trail and not kind of diverting out to, you know, to go to a restaurant or, you know, do some shopping in, in one of those trail towns. So um, similar to the last one, this is an open-ended question, and so um, similar uh, instructions here. So feel free um, to, to add in any thoughts you have in terms of those barriers uh, that users are running into now or will be running into um, uh, to get them into those trail towns. And again, after you, Shay. I was gonna say, uh, for those that um, would like to hear this aloud, uh, you can participate uh, on the web by going to pollev.com and entering VHB polls 501 um, or by text. You can text VHB polls 501 to the number 22333. Thank you, Shane. Once again, if we have anybody in the room who would just like to share a barrier that exists to getting its trail towns, go for it. While we're waiting for the results to come in, we do we did get a question from uh, Helen Beatty um, asking about how wide the right of way is, um, and uh, I would defer to maybe Chris Hunt, uh, who may know that it, it certainly varies along the length of the corridor. Um, but I, I'm curious, Chris, whether you know that offhand. 
kind of the standard right away width. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you're right. It does vary along the corridor. This the right of way for this trail was acquired by the rail line way back when it was first put in. So um, it, there's not one standard width. It it really depends on the slope of the trail, how wide it goes out. Um, I mentioned this in the last meeting, but there's a VTrans right of way viewer. Um, I could share the link again, where you can see how wide the white right of way is and where it abuts different parcels, different road crossings and things like that. I will, uh, I'll grab that link now and I can either give it to Shay or just put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you, Chris. And we did have um, one potential barrier here it would be access to bike locks or bike lock stations. And we are seeing a number of contra contributions from the pole EV space, unsafe street passages, safety concerns, and lack of signs, uh, parking for snowmobile trailers and trucks, bike locks, bike racks, structural connection. I missed that one. Sorry. Moving a little too fast for me <laughs> on the screen here. Structural connections, wayfinding, lack of awareness of opportunities and welcoming connections, directional and information signs, bike trails marked on streets and roads, um, lacking a safe route from the trail to the village, looking for connector sidewalks, paths, or adequate roadway shoulders, wayfinding, so trail users know what is available bike parking in communities. Connecting roads that present safety concerns, busy intersections, high traffic, et cetera. Signage showcasing downtown attractions, rivers and busy roads as a barrier, pedestrian and bike bridges across the river or busy roads be an add-on project. Someone offering up some information about the LVRT to Danville Center connection. Parking and routes for snowmobiles, lack of attractions in towns. I think we're slowing down on the responses here. Give folks just another minute to add any contributions. Definitely Anybody? seeing. Some consistency with the uh, wayfinding and uh, the, the access routes, um, uh, perceived lack of safety on those access routes, uh, two, two common themes here. Anybody else here in the room have anything they'd like to offer up? Great. Okay. <laughs> the ubiquitous political inertia, yes, very good. Okay. Well, good. Well, thank you for that. Let's see here. We'll move on to the second part of this question. Um, and so, as part of as part of the management plan, one of the things that um, that we'll be doing uh, is developing kind of sketches, concept sketches for um, several locations along the trail. And so. Um, those can be anything from, you know, showing how to bridge a certain connection where there may not be sidewalks or paths. So we'll, we'll be kind of articulating or, or, or documenting a certain um, uh, uh, route or, or way to address that. Uh, a good example here in the, in the upper right here is a railroad street in Johnson. So there is a short segment from the LVRT kind of heading into, into Johnson that doesn't, uh, that's a wide stretch of pavement, but no sidewalks or de de uh, delineated paths. And so looking at that from a kind of a concept sketch perspective and looking at, you know, what the cost would be to bridge that gap uh, with, you know, some kind of sidewalk or trail or some kind of demarcated uh, use uh, corridor for, for cyclists and pedestrians. Um, a second example would be the junction of the LVRT and uh, Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail, uh, kind of developing a concept sketch for that location. So um, trying to look for um, some, some guidance on what we should be developing those concept sketches for. 
Uh, as Karen mentioned, we've heard quite a bit of input to date and we've got some thoughts, but um, would love to hear your thoughts. If you have, you know, in your community, or if you're familiar with a community that has kind of that missing gap or, a, um, you know, a, a depot that would love to get uh, renovated or um, we'd love to see those uh, uh, suggested here in the comments. And so we'll go back to the poll EV and um, this is also an, an open ended uh, uh, question. Um, and so what we're really looking for are kind of, you know, the name of the town and kind of what what that connection or kind of that location um, be looking for uh, a little bit deeper dive, uh, kind of articulating or, or sketching out some potential solutions. Once again, anybody here in the room? All is well here in the room, David. Okay. Looks like all is well on the uh, online as well. I don't see any any results coming in. We'll give folks just a small, a uh, little bit more time here. Took a moment to get uh, to get this one activated. Sounds like there's a, a slight lag in the texting approach to this here. So folks okay, in the room great. catching up. Uh, it looks like we have the LVRT, MVRT junction. We're in Sheldon Junction. From the St. J Trailhead to where we are here in the Welcome Center. Greensboro Bend. Identify parking locations connecting directly or indirectly to the trail. It sounds like there is some groundwork being laid in Greensboro Bend, um, but the property ownership piece is complicated. It's like this comment is speaking to uh, West Danville, I believe, uh, looking at the alignment of Route 2 in, in West Danville, um, and then the Danville train station. Looks like the Danville train station is coming up quite a bit. A Highgate ice rink and arena. and rail crossing on Church Street in East Hardwick. These are, these are great. And these are, um, there's some new ones in here that we have not heard yet. So this is, this is fantastic input. So thank you everyone for that. Um, do we have any, any more in the room? No, no, no other, no other thoughts from the room. I'm sorry, just a, just a minute, David. Oh. Actually, do you want to come up? That might be a little easier for this one. Just a minute, we have a participant coming up. Uh, related to the uh, trailhead in St. Johnsbury to the Welcome Center connection, making those uh, intentional connections between the V Trans managed, sec managed section, the town managed section, the new trailhead pavilion and then getting people from that trailhead pavilion all the way into our downtown corridor and the Welcome Center. There are a bunch of different moving parts and pieces to that. Great, thank you. Okay, great. So we've got some good feedback here. At, um, I'm guessing no, no more um, thoughts in the room. No more thoughts in the room that I that I can see volunteering here. Okay, great. Well, let's move on to um, our last question here, um, and so this this one um, gets at kind of the solution. So, design features that can be used to draw users into the trail towns. And so, we talked about at the outset kind of those barriers to getting users. Um, uh, are there specific design features that you'd like to see at either those trailheads or those junction points that can really um, pull users off the trail and let them know kind of what's happening in those trail towns and really um, give them a reason to um, you know visit visit those towns? 
And so this will be the, um, also going back to Poly V, this will also be uh, an open-ended question. And uh, so any thoughts you have there in terms of uh, ways to get people uh, um, aware, made them, make them aware of what's uh, in those kind of the trail communities as they're, as they're moving along the trail and help them to, to decide, uh, you know, that they should uh, detour or take a, take a detour out into that community along, uh, on their ride along the trail. And same as before, if anybody would rather either shout something short out or for something a little longer, feel free to come up to the microphone and share your thoughts. I guess, um, Shay, we could also, if, if anyone wanted to raise their hand, we can, we can do that as well. Anyone remote, if they wanted to verbally speak their answer. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. So folks, if you are on, uh, a computer or mobile device, there's the raise hand button. Um, and I can call on folks in the order that we get those uh, hand raises. Um, it doesn't look like anybody is joining us by the telephone, but if you are, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. <laughs> Beer this way, I like that. We have quite a few people here in the room uh, nodding and agreeing with the QR code, David. Mm, okay. Along with the beer one, too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. We've got the stamp books idea, which I think is a great, a great idea. Um, I know I, um, previously living in the Upper Valley um, down in the, uh, on, on the border of New Hampshire and Vermont, the, the Valley Quest uh, thought that that was a really great program that got, got kids and, and grownups out on trails and had a similar stamp book program that really encouraged people to try to find their way all to the end of all the trails. Uh, that would be kind of a cool idea to have. You know, maybe each community has their own you know, unique uh, punch card or something that uh, people can collect along the way. It looks like we're getting a number of folks talking about uh, trail kiosks, bulletin boards, um, ways to informational signage, ways to get the information about what's available uh, to the trail users so that they know what's, what's down the road in that trail town. Oh, these are really great. See an interactive map here that I think folks are going to be using their their uh, devices when they're along the trail as long as, long as they have Wi-Fi. But uh, if we can provide them access to, you know, let them know on their devices what what destinations are close by, that would be great. Yeah, distributing access points is a good idea um, so that everyone isn't loading all in kind of a single point along the trail. Okay, well, these are these are great, great input and um, much more detail. You know, I think what we heard uh, uh, in the first question in this this segment are you know wayfind. It seemed like wayfinding and kind of the lack of you know clear trails or access points to get to the villages. Uh, but these uh, design features to get people into the towns, you know, is much more than just wayfinding and you know building a sidewalk. I, I love these ideas. Um, some really innovative and out of the box thinking to get. Um, to make this really an exciting destination, you know, get people kind of excited to go and, and visit, you know, those communities along the trail. Okay, well, I think it seems like things have slowed down a bit. So why don't we, um, why don't we keep moving on here? Okay, so that um, that kind of brings us through kind of the structure, the development of the management plan, and kind of where we are today is really developing those recommendations within each of those uh, those buckets or those chapters of the management plan, uh, and then from there, the final step will be to uh, develop an implementation plan. So, so taking those series of recommendations and uh, really describing how to put those into action, whether that's kind of talking about the the time frame, you know, when when those uh, actions should be should take place. Uh, also articulating kind of who is responsible for implementing those, those recommendations, um, who are the kind of the partners who, who will help to assist those uh, costs and budgeting uh, implications for each of those recommendations. 
So all of that will get kind of wrapped up into an implementation plan that will really guide, um, will hopefully help Jackie and her team um, as 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 the uh, the trail moves into VTrans uh, control and can really imp implement the recommendations from the management plan. So that's kind of that's where we are today, and um, we'll wrap up. We're going to do one last pass for comments, but. Um, We'll just uh, uh, take on uh, next steps so that uh, you're all familiar or kind of aware of where we're headed from here. Um, so we're just in the process. So we're working through this kind of gap analysis and needs assessment as we kind of create that funnel and, and um, kind of uh, take this input and uh, kind of compare that to uh, the vision and goals for the corridor. Out of that flows the recommendations and the implementation plan. And so those two steps will largely take kind of the next two months to flesh out. Uh, and develop that, that recommendation um, and implementation plan. Uh, as Karen alluded to, we'll be back out uh, for our third public meeting up in the Northwest uh, section of the, of the corridor up in Franklin County uh, in early June. And then we'll be wrapping up the final plan, um, hopefully by the end of June, early July, just in time for that transition of ownership to, uh, to move over to VTrans. Um, I think I saw, I saw a quick, quick uh, video here. Is somebody uh, maybe have a comment or something you wanna share? Yeah, hi, Laurel Ruggles from Danville, a couple of things. So I was really happy to hear that consistency along the trail is a priority because that comes up a lot, that consistent branding and look and feel so no people know they're on one big trail system. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, if you're a user on the trail, it's pretty obvious when you go through some of the towns that where the trail already goes, that the towns have already made a big investment. So this is really important to them. Um, and I think most of the towns are willing to make more investments in their own, you know, resources, time, money, whatever it is. But we need to know what are we, what are we supposed to be doing, and what is the stake going to do? What's our responsibility, and what's yours? Because often we are ready. We're, we're going to do signs, but oh no, if the state's going to do it, we don't want to waste our time and money on that. So the sooner you can let us know that, the better. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'll, I'll open it up to anyone else, um, anyone who's in the room in person or, or virtual. Um, if you have any questions at all, anything you would you would hope to share or questions you would hope to get uh, answered tonight, um, feel free to drop it either into the Q and A, and we can read that live. Or uh, if you want to raise your hand, if you're if you're uh, remote, uh, we can um, uh, turn on your video and we'll be able. You can ask your question live. Uh, and then, obviously, if you're there in person, uh, you could step up to the mic and ask your question. Do you want to come up to the mic? I could also attempt to repeat. Yep, so we're hearing about the flow of traffic on the trail itself um, and having some signage around um, who yields to who, um, who has the right of way uh, on the trail system itself. Trail etiquette is, is the word being thrown out in the room here. I've got a couple of comments and questions online as well. Um, John Kaplan from VTrans uh, suggested checking out the website for the Empire State Trail. Uh, it's got some got some good information for uh, the uh, food, lodging, and other other um, things that you, trail users would be interested in. Uh, we have a question from uh, Marcy Larrabee saying, "Is there is there going to be grant money for emergency services to access the trail in case of emergencies? We're thinking about injured uh, injured people needing to be evacuated and brought to a roadside for care." That's a very good, good uh, question, Marcy, and that is one that has come up quite a bit, and um, uh, something that we are are certainly considering as part of the uh, kind of the ongoing maintenance and operation, making sure that there are um, access points close to emergency services. Um, whether there's going to be grant money, I don't, I, I'm not aware of any grant money at this point, um, but we're certainly being uh, uh, mindful of providing, making sure that there are um, access points for those emergency services. Uh, we have uh, Anonymous saying, um, has there been any discussion about designating a couple days a week as non-motorized days in the winter? Um, uh, none that I'm aware of. I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in. Um, that is a, it's a good question, but I've not heard uh, of anyone speak about that yet. 
Uh, we've got a question, how will issues with landowners be addressed? Uh, for example, how would the state handle a situation where a land, landowner has a loose dog that hangs out on or near the trail? Um, those are exactly the types of situations that we'll be articulating. Um, as uh, Jackie Casino, who, who introduced herself, she will very likely be kind of that single point of contact and will be um, the one kind of uh, directing questions and comments and concerns uh, to, the, to the appropriate um, sources within VTrans. Um, so we have a question from the Rails to Trails Conservancy. Is it possible to do user counts starting the spring? So when the 93 miles is complete, you can see what uh, the increase has been. Um, that's an interesting, uh, interesting question. Um, uh, it will not be exactly an apples to apples, right? I, I guess if we did, if we counted this spring, it would only be with those partial segments open. Um, but it is an interesting comment. Um, and uh, I see Shay, you've got a comment in here. Is there another another uh, response here to that question? Oh, sorry, I was marking uh, that we were answering that question there. Okay. Um, just to build on that, though, there has been discussion about some trail counters, and um, I know uh, uh, John Kaplan is on the line, and or or maybe Amy Bell in the room. I um, is there anything? to share about uh, potential trail counters, maybe some permanent counters along the trail. Has any discussion happened along those lines? Hi, uh, Bill Gray. Uh, we have done, uh, worked with the Northwest Regional Planning Commission and installed um, counters on the MVRT. Um, and we kind of monitor, um, you know, any increases or decreases. And I suspect as the Lamoille Valley Trail gets developed, we'll do the same on that. Mm -hmm. um, so. Great, great, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see, we've got a question from Brendan. How should community groups best coordinate with the LVRT around planning? Um, uh, it's a good question. I guess um, it depends on the type of planning, but um, I, I again, um, uh, she's just starting in this role, but uh, you know, Jackie Casino after after July one will be that point of contact, and so I would suggest um, coordinating with her. Certainly, um, reaching out to any of the the team members here uh, if there's questions around planning today, you know, up until uh, July one, um, can certainly reach out to anyone um, on this panel who is speaking today, uh, as well as the uh, the regional planning commissions uh, would be a good uh, first starting point as well for uh, that coordination. Uh, Paul Weaver mentioned uh, safety concern around the crossing in Danville at Route 2 by Larrabee's. Um, apparently, there are other crossings that Bass and others have similar concerns about the trail where vehicle speeds are high. Uh, thank you, Paul. That is um, something we are we are aware of and um, uh, have certainly, um, uh, I've looked into some of those crossings in a little bit more detail. So thank you for that. Uh, and then Paul also suggested we'd like to see splashing cross signs at those crossing locations. And that's, um, those are the questions that have come in online. Um, do we have any more in the room? Any other questions or comments from the room? So one contributor coming up to the microphone. So I would like to know just what the policy would be for um, submitting public art proposals for along the rail trail and what would be the process for doing that? Do you wanna jump in, Dave? Um, it is a good question. That is something that we're actually going to be, uh, going to be talking through over the next couple of weeks with folks within um, uh, VTrans. You know, so this is this is this will be a new, a new program once this transitions over to VTrans. So we're really gonna be, um, Figuring these out, uh, you know, um, the right response to these types of questions. I think there's a lot of interest in you know, whether it's artwork or some kind of interpretive displays, historic markers uh, along the corridor. And we want to make sure we've got a good uh, process in place. And so that's something that we'll, we'll be developing over the next couple of weeks and will be wrapped into this management plan. And Dave, it looks like Amy was going to field this one and, and Jackie has stepped to the mic. So Dave, oh, we, the agency does have um, a policy and guidance process for submitting those sort of proposals. We've also worked closely um, with the Vermont Arts Council on some of their grant programs. 
because they are a good funding source for those sort of uh, op options. So feel free to reach out to me or check in with me if you have some thoughts or ideas. Um, it's still, you know, it's very new. Um, so I would say like the more complicated and larger scale the project is and depending on the type of location, um, it could take a while, but um, we definitely have an option for that. Great, thank you, Jackie. Please. The question here is, will there be an opportunity for historical markers uh, along trail segments, um, or is that still sort of in the discussion phase? Bill was offering up a, a response to that question, saying that there will be historical markers and they are working on the preservation and, and historical marking of, of sites along the trail. To get two more uh, questions online, um, one around generating a, a communications or a question, will we, will, will we be generating a, a communications plan or strategy to help inform local efforts? Uh, absolutely, that will be uh, kind of one of the key roles that um, Jackie and others at VTrans will be serving is making sure that um, there's kind of uh, uh, open communications with each of the trail site communities and the regional planning commissions and other stakeholders along the corridor. Uh, so that will uh, absolutely be open, open lines of communication there. Uh, and a question about the uh, plan for funding after the appropriations have been used up. Uh, there, um, that is also something that will be fleshed out, but that this will be uh, general transportation fund dollars um, that will go to fund this, whether it's, it's federal or state dollars, um, probably be likely a mix of those two, uh, but those will be uh, used for the ongoing maintenance of the trail uh, um, beyond those appropriations. And um, the appropriations will likely be used for kind of one-time uh, enhancements along the trail rather than for kind of the ongoing maintenance. I think we had some follow-on questions in the in the room. Any other questions or comments from the in-person side of the meeting? No Seeing no movement towards the microphone on this side of things, Dave. Okay, and no more online questions either. So maybe we'll move to wrap up here then. Okay, so um, contact information is here. So please do feel free to reach out to either Amy Bell, who's the project manager for this project or uh, Karen Sentoff, uh, both uh, contact information are there. Um, also very uh, highly encourage you if you haven't had a chance yet to visit the, uh, the website that's listed here, the LVRT page at btrans.vermont.gov. Uh, uh, and then on there as well is this crowdsource input tool. Uh, so if you, if you navigate to that site or directly to the input tool, um, you can access that and um, that allows you to zoom in on the map, put your point, um, thumb up or thumb down certain um, other, other suggestions that have been made. Um, so I would encourage you, if you haven't had a chance to go there, there's also information at that, at that website for uh, the latest construction information as well. You'll find both information on the current construction activities as well as uh, updates on this management plan um, to keep in touch. And then uh, just a final reminder, in uh, early June, we'll be back at this again and we'll be presenting um, kind of the draft report. So uh, responding to many of the questions tonight around kind of the logistics and operations and um, kind of management of the system, uh, we'll be talking about that in June. So. Um, with that, we'll, we'll wrap up for tonight. Um, thank you everyone uh, online and in person for, for joining us tonight. And um, please do keep in touch and uh, we'll hope to see you in June. And thank you everyone in person and online for joining us this evening uh, here in the St. Johnsbury Welcome Center and in the virtual space on Zoom. Thank you. <laughs>